Hello, g'day again everyone. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to do a basic double exposure using Adobe Photoshop. Um, and what a double exposure portrait is, is um, a, basically two pictures that are combined together to create one, such as in the example on the screen here. Um, usually it's a portrait photograph uh, mixed with some sort of landscape. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you'll first need is you'll need a photograph uh, of a portrait. And thank you, Brody, for letting me use your photograph for this lesson. Um, now, I've taken it in front of the green screen because if you've got flat color behind it, it's just going to be easier to make a selection from. So the first thing you'll need to do is unlock the background layer. And let's grab our quick selection tool and let's select our portrait. Okay, make sure you get every bit, see how um, this bit's unselected, so grab that, alright, that's looking pretty good. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll press, press this button here, create a layer mask. What that's going to do is it's going to give us a mask uh, that'll sit side by side with our layer. Uh, and I'll explain what layer masks are in more detail in class. Um, so the next thing we'll do is we'll need a new layer and we want to get the bucket tool and we want to fill it with white just for now and let's drag and drop the layer order change the layer order so it's underneath now don't worry that you can see some green around here that will go away as we move through the video um, now what we'll do now the next part is what we want to do is we want to now import or place the image that we're going to blend this together with so Go to File and choose Place Embedded. And I've got a few that I've been playing around with here. I'm going to choose this one with the forest. Place that. And what you can now do, I'm going to just zoom out with Command Minus. Uh, and using your free transform controls, holding Shift, I'm going to drag this so that it's at least covering the bottom, the whole of the, whole of the portrait. All right, press enter to set it or double click and that's that part done. Now, the next part, you want to click on this layer here and just make sure, I oh know it doesn't really matter for now, I'll tell you that in a minute. Let's change the blending mode to lighten. What that'll do is that'll start to show us what's, um, that'll blend the top layer in with the bottom layer and grab your move tool and then you can now start to, whoops, undo that, make sure you're on your, um, your um, landscape layer, and you can just start to move this around, and you can see the you can see the outline of the portrait, and then you can start to see where you think you might like to place your image. So just remember that it's going to fit inside the actual portrait, so around this area here. Okay, um, you can move it up, you can move it down. I might just you could even with free transform, you could even get creative and you could um, change the, sorry, you could change the, um, the rotation Oops. and that might give you some kind of cool effect. I might try that actually, that looks kind of cool like that. All right, and now once you've set it and you're happy with it, the next thing you need to do is we want to now go and create a layer mask for this layer. So make sure your landscape layer selected, click layer mask. Notice nothing's happened. All right, so we're gonna go back onto, hold command, sorry, before we do anything else, command, and you'll notice when I go onto the layer mask above it, a little square um, marching ant line appears around the cursor, click that. And that's going to create that selection again. And what we want to do is we want to inverse this selection. And I'll show you why in a minute. Go to select and inverse. And that'll just reverse the selection. And now, making sure that your layer mask is selected, this area here, you need to grab your paintbrush. And um, let's select a hard brush. And let's use our right bracket key to make our size bigger. And what's going to happen is I'm going to paint. Whoops, wait a minute. That's not right. Okay, we need to have black selected, not white, sorry. So, um, and watch what happens when I press here. And 
the background layer now gets revealed. And you'll notice on the mask, wherever I paint, a black mark comes up. So what that is doing is it's hiding, it's not actually rubbing it out, it's just hiding certain areas of the landscape layer and those black areas will hide, will relate to the, the place on your landscape layer. Okay, so I am going to just mask all that out. Now if I make a mistake, which I won't because I've got it selected, but I can flick back to white paint and white paint will reveal and you can see it changes my mask there. So that's the rules with a layer mask. Black paint hides, white paint reveals. Okay, so now, so that's done. The next thing, let's just um, deselect, come in and D. And what we want to do now is, we're almost nearly, we're almost done. What we want to do is we want to click on our top layer and we want to take the color out of it. So we want to um, turn it to black and white instead of color. So go to image adjustments and desaturate. That will take all the color out of it. And you can see our effect is starting to take place now. Um, that's pretty much it. What you could also do is, now I'm going to show you a couple more things, but what you could also do is you could play around with the opacity if you wanted to, just to make some fine adjustments there. Um, you could also play around with the opacity of this layer, but I probably wouldn't recommend it. Oh, well, you might. It you might, might look nicer. Um, okay, the last thing we'll do is we'll put some color on the background um, so that uh, instead of having it white, we'll add a couple of color adjustment layers. So the first one is let's choose solid color, and maybe we just choose red or something like that. It doesn't really matter the color because you can always go back and change it. Click OK. Um, now we want to put this on top, sorry, that needs to be on, on our t very, the very top layer. And let's change the blend mode to exclusion so that it blends with the layers below it and we can see it. And let's, before we do anything else, let's get another one and let's do a gradient. And make sure linear selected, but you can experiment with these. Let's just choose any one of these gradients, click OK. Um, linear, angle, I mean you could muck around with these as you see fit. Just click OK and change the blend mode on this one to screen so that it reveals what's underneath. And now we've got some nice colour coming through. You could also lower the opacity of these two colour adjustment layers and basically now you're, you just need to go in and you need to fine tune. If I want to change the colour to see what can work, I can double click here. Um, I might try green and see what see what that's doing and move your move your circle around, muck around with the colours. Okay, if you think that looks kind of cool, you can go back into your gradient as well. You could change the colour of the gradient. Um, you could change the angle. You could experiment with linear, radial, um, and all kinds of things. All right, I'm just going to leave it with that. And I quite like that. I might drop the opacity down a little bit more. It gives it kind of like a tropical feel with those colours in it. All right, so that's it. You can now go to File, Export, Export As, and let's choose a JPEG, 100% quality. Export all, choose a location, uh, portrait, give it a name, and I'll save it in my double exposure folder. And that's it. Thanks for watching.